In any move of the Holy Spirit, Jesus will always be the center. Healing cannot become the message. Deliverance cannot become the message. Prosperity cannot become the message. The message must remain centered and focused upon Jesus the Christ. He is the foundation. He is the absolute truth. He is the measure against which we put all things. By him we understand and navigate the realm of the spirit. It's by his person that we are grounded in truth while pursuing supernatural moves of the Holy Spirit. The moment you shift your focus from Jesus, who he is, to what he does, you're in danger. The moment it becomes about the miracles, you're in danger. The moment it becomes about the deliverance of people who are demon possessed, you're in danger. The moment it becomes about prosperity, about prophecy, about end time theology, about all of these wonderful and interesting things that we all need. The moment the focus shifts to those things, we begin to wander in the strange and the superstitious world of unbiblical foundations. Now, of course, we believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe Jesus heals, delivers, speaks prophetic words. We believe that the Bible gives us insight as to how things will unfold in the final days. But we must not become so obsessed with our doctrines, ideas, and theologies that our eyes move away from Jesus. Why? Because he is not just the giver of these things. He is the substance itself. Jesus does not give healing. He is healing. Jesus does not cause deliverance. He is deliverance. Jesus does not just cause people to prophesy. He is the centerpiece of prophecy. He is the all in all. He is the center of our focus. He is the foundation of all things spiritual. He is the absolute truth. He does not point the way. He is the way. He does not give life. He is life. He does not cause resurrection. He is resurrection. Jesus is these things and so much more. And so when asking for a move of the spirit, you must realize that a true move of the spirit will always be marked by a focus on the person of Jesus. If you're not careful, you'll miss what he's doing in this day. Now, Jesus does not change, but methods do. The message stays the same, but methods must be adjusted for highest possible impact. Think about the fact that today we have cameras here that are streaming this all around the world. That's a different method. I promise you, Paul the Apostle did not talk about live streaming. Why? Because they didn't have it. It's a different method, same message. Now, God does do new things, but he'll never do anything so different that it causes you to be in heresy. This is important. God will do new things, but he'll never do something so new so different that it will contradict the scripture. The scripture is our basis for understanding how God moves. So if ever you hear of anything that contradicts what the Bible says, as convincing as it may be, it's important that you recognize that yes, God does do new things, but he will never do anything so different that it contradicts his word. The Holy Spirit is moving in a fresh way now. And if we're not careful, that wave can just pass us by. 
Now, I believe in living in such a way that the power of God is constantly demonstrated through our lives. I believe in living a lifestyle of evangelism, of the supernatural, all of these things. You hear people talk about revival and you'll often get two different ideas from the body of Christ. On one side, they say, I'm not waiting for revival, I am a revival. And I understand that thinking to some degree. On the other side, there are those who say we're waiting on the move of God because we can't cause him to do anything outside of his will. Both of them are correct. Moves of the Holy Spirit can be a lifestyle. While at the same time, there are certain seasons in this lifetime that God will, with his Holy Spirit, breathe fresh upon a generation. And I believe that's what he's doing now. The first sign that the Holy Spirit is moving. Number one, the lost are saved. Acts chapter two, verses one through four say this. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, I love that about the Holy Spirit. Things are just mediocre. You look around the plain, ordinary settings of everyday life. And then suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So here we see the New Testament church united, gathering in faith at the command that Jesus had given. They're gathered, they're praying, they're focused on the Lord when suddenly the Holy Spirit begins to move. Now, what was a result of this? Yes, they began to pray in other tongues. Yes, they began to see greater demonstrations of miracles. But look down over at verse 40. This was the true result of Pentecost. Acts 2, I'm going to read 40 and 41. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners. So there, the first church service, he set the pace. This is why preachers go long. Save, it's a joke. Save yourselves. Uh, someone's going to write that down. Don't write that down. It was a joke. <laughs> Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. So the Holy Spirit comes like a mighty rushing wind. Flames or tongues of fire were settled upon each of their heads. People heard and saw the Holy Spirit at work around them. And as a result, Peter stands up, begins to preach, and 3,000 people, likely more, were added to that number, meaning 3,000 people gave their lives to the Lord. This is the first and primary mark of a move of the Holy Spirit, is there is this great sweeping in of souls. You often hear stories, and so do I, of how God moved during the Jesus people movement. Now, I wasn't alive then, but I knew people who were. And there are many, many testimonies of radical conversions and the salvation of people you never thought would even want to step into a church. There was this great sweeping in of souls and the ones who they least thought would ever turn to Jesus became the most radical. I believe that. I'm praying for that this day, that God would save the most radical in the world. I pray he saves members of Antifa. I pray he saves all those people who are rioting and burning down cities. I pray that he saves those who stand most boldly for perversion and heights of political power. I pray that God begins to convert the least likely. And I believe that we're just about to see that. In fact, we are seeing it now. We have to be careful that we don't get stuck in our revival rhetoric and all this talk of, oh, one day, and we get caught in between saying, oh, one day, and oh, how it used to be. That right there will get you stuck, and you'll miss a move of the Holy Spirit. 
Stop waiting for God to do what he did back then. Stop waiting for it to look exactly the same. In principle, it will look the same, but there will be different methods and modes of delivering that message. And stop longing for the day that one day God will do it. I believe we're in it now. Souls are being saved. That day is now. We see it as we travel around the world. Many of you know this next month. When it comes to the events as we travel around the world, we have to stop renting church buildings. We're moving to conference centers now. And what we see at these moves of the Holy Spirit, what we see at these events is the same thing over and over. People come forward and give their lives to Jesus. And this is something that's happening not just in our ministry. God is doing it all over the world. A true move of the Spirit will shift the statistics and demographics. A true move of the Spirit will lower the crime rate, will lower the poverty rate, will lower the divorce rates. Suicide rates will begin to drop when the power of the Holy Ghost begins to move. Cities and regions will be transformed when the power of the Holy Ghost begins to move. God will clean the human heart and he'll also clean up the streets. When the power of the Holy Ghost begins to move, regions are taken for the kingdom of God. Souls are saved. And we're in it. The second thing that happens in a true move of the Holy Spirit, the sick are healed. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, and you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Jesus used the healing of the sick as a part of his ministry strategy. Now that may sound odd to some of you who think that Jesus was just this hippie-like figure who roamed the streets wandering around, kind of just doing whatever came his way. No, he was very intentional and strategic. And one of the strategies that he used for furthering the gospel message was the healing of the sick. Now, I said this a couple months ago, and we're starting to see it now. But what we are seeing is this intensification of healing miracles. That testimony you heard tonight, that's just the beginning. Some of you were here last month when that woman's tumor disappeared. Right here in the service. Some of you will be healed even as the ministry is going on right now through the preaching of the word. You probably won't even know it until we, we start to ask you to check for your healing. But miracles are a mark of a move of the Holy Spirit. In Mark 16, 15 through 18, the scripture tells us of the signs that follow the believer. When you walk with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to follow signs. Signs will follow you. Amen. Miracles will follow you. Ears will be opened. Blind eyes will see. People will begin coming out of wheelchairs. Paralysis will be healed. Nerves will be restored. Tumors will disappear. Skin disorder will disappear. God heals the sick when the Holy Spirit begins to move. Mark 16, 20 says, and the disciples went everywhere and preached and the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. God will always back his word with miracles. Remember this, God backs his message with miracles. If you want to see miracles, stop preaching your opinion and start preaching the gospel. You want to see miracles? Stop preaching your political preferences and start preaching the gospel. God will not anoint our opinions, our ideas, or man's philosophy. God will only anoint one message, and that's the gospel. And the gospel is always accompanied by healing miracles. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.